1975, the U.S. Congress passed the Education of All Handicapped Children's Act. This act was passed to provide handicapped and students with disabilities a free and appropriate public education and give states financial assistance to support the implementation of the act. Prior to 1975, public education for handicapped children was virtually non-existent. In 1974, there were 8 million handicapped children. Of those 8 million, 1 million had not received public education and 4 million were not provided related services to meet their individual needs. The issue of handicapped children was viewed by Congress as a civil rights issue. There were 8 million children in the United States that were not included in the American dream of free public education. The Education of All Handicapped Children's Act, the EAHCA, was the first act to address the needs of handicapped children. It has been amended in court proceedings and other legislation. In 1990, the EAHCA was amended through the IDEA, the Individual with Disabilities Education Act, and amended once again by the IDEIA, the Individuals with Disabilities Improvement Act, in 2004. Currently, the IDEIA is the most current policy regarding students with disabilities in public schools. This video will describe the definition of free and appropriate public education which is the central focus of the IDEIA and should be looked at closely by administrators in order to provide an equal educational opportunity for students with disabilities. The categories for students with disabilities include cognitive impairment, hearing impairment and deafness, speech impediments, visual impairment and blindness, learning disabilities, brain injury, emotional disturbance, orthopedic impairment, autism, traumatic brain injury, and specific learning disabilities. The IDEIA grants that all students with disabilities free and appropriate public education. Each state receiving federal funding under the IDEIA has to develop a plan to provide free and appropriate publication and submit it to the U.S. Department of Education. Each student with a disability needs to have an IEP which stands for Individualized Education Plan. The IEP provides the following. The present levels of educational performance of the child, a statement of annual goals, including short-term instructional objectives, a statement of specific educational services to be provided to such child, classroom determination, whether it's general or more restrictive, transitional services for uh, out of school for older kids, procedures to see if the goals are met, and the IEP is reviewed once a year. An IEP is designated only after the child find procedure to identify the disability has been completed. Parent notification is required to complete the child find process. If the parents do not sign the forms, a hearing can be held to override parental consent in some states. An evaluation of the child is completed and must be done within 60 calendar days of receiving consent. An evaluation is done of the child from a school psychologist who tests the child and gathers information about the child from his or her teachers. If a disability is found, then an IEP is created by an IEP team, which includes a special education teacher, a regular education teacher, a school psychologist, and the parents. When the IEP teams convene, the goal is always to try and reach consensus of what are the needs of the student. However, in some cases, after careful discussion has occurred, the administration may need to make a decision of which the parent disagrees. In these circumstances, the parent may choose to follow due process. Parents or local agencies can file a due process complaint within two years of the known incident. A hearing is held within the LEA, Local Education Agency, with an impartial officer. If not satisfied with the results, an appeal can be made to a state agency and possibly a state or federal court. Although a free and appropriate public education was granted under the Education of All Handicapped Children's Act, the idea of free and appropriate public education wasn't clear. In 1982, a deaf student's parents sued their local school district because they wouldn't provide an interpreter. In the case of Board of Education of Hendrick Hudson Central School District versus Amy Raleigh, 
According to the IEP, the student didn't need an interpreter because she already received a hearing aid and instruction from a speech therapist as well as a deaf instructor and didn't need an interpreter because she was making adequate progress in her classes. The Supreme Court heard the case and sided with the school district. According to the Supreme Court, a free appropriate publication is not one that advances a student over others, but gives them equal access to education as compared to the rest of their peers. This case was important as it defined free and appropriate public education for students with disabilities. Also, to have a free and appropriate public education is to provide a classroom inclusion into an LRE, the least restrictive environment for handicapped students in a general education classroom. Related services should be provided for students to be successful in classrooms, including transportation, medical services, counseling, psychological therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, audio equipment, nursing, and interpreting. A general classroom is considered the least restrictive environment first, then can be changed later in the IEP if a more restrictive environment is needed. In 1994, in the case Oberti v. Clementon School District, student Raphael Oberti, who had Down syndrome, was placed in a special education class outside the district. His parents refused and used their due process rights to stop Raphael from being placed in a segregated class. The Supreme Court heard the case and said segregated classes are allowed, but must make efforts to modify the regular classroom education program to make curriculum accessible. The aids and services that the district must consider include speech and language therapy, special education trainings for regular teachers. If a student is placed in a segregated facility, the district must incur the cost and must amend the student's IEP. This case provides the framework for placing students in classrooms, whether they are regular or segregated. In order for a student with disabilities to be properly included into a regular classroom, regular teachers need to be trained in meeting those needs. This includes any medical procedure required. In order for a student to receive free and appropriate public education, simple medical procedures can be provided by teachers, nurses, and other school personnel with proper training. In Irving Independent School District v. Tatro, Amy Tatro needed her catheter changed during the school day because she suffered from a disease called spinal bifida and couldn't do it herself. The district refused. However, the Supreme Court disagreed, and now simple medical procedures can be completed by school personnel, and the state and local school districts are in charge of providing funding and training for this. Students with disabilities can also be guaranteed summer school, since retainment of information may be more difficult for them. In some districts, like the Anchorage School District, Elementary students with disabilities can belong to a program called ESY, Extended School Year. Transportation, medical, technological, as well as nutritional services are provided. Students who qualify can belong to this program. In order for a free and appropriate public education to be maintained, school discipline is slightly adjusted. Students cannot be disciplined if the behavior exhibited is a manifestation of their disability. However, students can be suspended up to 10 days regardless of their disability. This was settled in the Supreme Court case Doe v. Kroger, 1979. In 1978, the case known as Stewart v. Nappy outlined the expulsion procedure for students with disabilities. Students with disabilities can be expelled, but special education services must still be provided. This means that the student who was expelled could be placed into a more restrictive environment. A change in placement requires procedural due process. However, if the change of placement needs to occur before the due process is completed, a court order can be obtained. If not, the child can be placed in an alternative facility for up to 10 days. The due process procedure for expulsion requires change in the IEP. This requires parent notification and a manifestation meeting. A manifestation meeting is conducted by the administration, parents, teachers to see if the behavior was caused by the disability. This must occur between 10 days of the incident. Parents may appeal the hearing to the state agency, but the child remains in the alternative facility. State testing under No Child Left Behind is required by students with disabilities. No Child Left Behind grants that 2% of students within the school district can take alternative tests and 1% of students with severe disabilities 
can take an alternative evaluation. Free and appropriate public education is the cornerstone of educating students with disabilities. However, it has been complicated with court proceedings and new legislation. Because there are many ranges of disabilities, some students may have a learning disability, while others may experience autism. Knowing what is equal to all students is not always agreed on by all parties in the special education arena. This is why, as administrators, it is important to understand that every student in your school gets an equal opportunity to be educated and services must be provided for students with disabilities to bridge that gap. Free and equal does not advance the student, but allows them equal access to education. It is important to understand that special education law so that student placement, services, and discipline are handled accordingly, so all students with disabilities can be treated equally.